A Sweet 16 Friday Live right here on the early line rolls on. I am Ben. He is Donnie. Our coach, JY. James Young joins us once again as the man in the middle. We will get to the four matchups that we have in the men's NCAA tournament in just a moment. But the women go dancing once again after a few days off. It is the second weekend of the 2024 women's NCAA tournament. Not a ton of upsets like in the men's bracket on the women's side either. Four matchups tonight in the Sweet 16. South Carolina continues its perfect undefeated season. They're a 15 and a half point favorite in a Sweet 16 game against Indiana. Kenzie Holmes and the Hoosiers should not be taken lightly. Texas, a one seed as well. Five and a half point favorite against Gonzaga. Stanford barely survived in overtime against Iowa State in the round of 32. Four and a half point favorite against NC State in Notre Dame. Three and a half point favorite against Oregon State. Of those four matchups, JY, what catches your attention the most? Well, number one, can anybody play with South Carolina? South Carolina team that, let's be honest, I, I don't know if they if they lost focus or, or whatever, but they looked, let's be honest, a little bit vulnerable in the SEC tournament, right? Uh, you talk about down the stretch that 74-73 that win needed Cardozo's three at the top of the key uh, when, when Kelly Harper did not send a big to go guard her, bang, three. Then the LSU game, and all the craziness was before the craziness, was a really tight game. But then they got to the tournament, man, and it's almost like Dawn Staley said, all right, time to go, and a blow. And what they did to Cordy Banger in, in North Carolina, which I thought was a really good team, beating them by 47 points. Now, this Indiana team, folks, can score. Because he homes at a stud. They This could be a game. It's, it's, it's about the first 10 minutes, right? Dawn likes to throw that punch early in that first quarter and try and knock you out. They got to keep this game really, really close. What's also intriguing to me is this this, uh, this team in in Notre Dame. Uh, I keep going back to the pride of Haddonfield down by Donnie's area. This kid Hidalgo, who is an absolute stud. Now, Oregon State's one of the better defensive teams in the country, so they're going to make Hannah work a little bit. That is an intriguing matchup. And then obviously you can talk about what Vic Schaefer's done at Texas has been fantastic. Can Gonzaga get it done? They're both playing tonight. Could they get two upsets? I don't know. National Championship Odds, Coach, has anything changed in your eyes? You take a look at South Carolina, still a massive favorite at minus 165, followed by Iowa plus 750, LSU at 10 to 1, and Connecticut at 12 to 1. Is it still South Carolina, and it's going to take an unbelievable effort to knock them off or any value behind them? Well, it's going to take an unbelievable effort to knock them off just because they're playing, you know, such great basketball. But to me, you know, I, I, keep, I keep looking at, I know maybe I'm, I'm nuts, but I keep looking at UConn. I keep looking at UConn, and I keep looking at a team that has not put it all together yet, but Paige Beckers is playing as good a basketball that I've seen in two years. And geez, they got a favorable matchup tomorrow against Duke. Yep. Carol Lawson got an upset win. Uh, was the only team that won an upset on a, on a, on a neutral floor, or not neutral floor, on the road, I would say. Connecticut has themselves a nice draw to come out of Region 3 in Portland to win and get the winner of USC Baylor, I think the moment could be too big for Juju Watkins. So to me, uh, I would look at Connecticut, and if you could find that South Carolina versus the field, I, I might as well take the field and take a chance that someone knocks them off. You never know. There is the South Carolina versus the field. It's minus 165 for the Gamecocks. It's plus 130 for every other team that remains in this NCAA tournament on the women's side. Listen, college basketball on the women's side has more parity than we have ever seen. South Carolina is perfect. They are undefeated, but they are not going to scroll their way into a national championship despite a 47-point win in the round of 32 against their other state rivals in North Carolina. By the way, the four games that we have tomorrow, every one of them is sensational. To JY's point, Connecticut in their 30th straight Sweet 16 appearance is an eight and a half point favorite against Carol Larson and Duke. The Blue Devils pulling the upset over the two seed in Portland Region 3 against Ohio State this past weekend in Columbus. That's an eight and a half point number. The reigning champs, LSU, a three and a half point favorite against UCLA. 
Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Six and a half point favorite against Colorado. That game tips at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then Juju Watkins and her USC Trojans. A two and a half point favorite against Baylor. That game at 5.30. UConn and Duke is the nightcap in the women's Sweet 16 on a Saturday. Let's go Sweet 16 Friday in the men's 2024 NCAA tournament. And we talk about Duke but under John Shire. It's the 1-4 matchup in the South region. The nightcap tonight in Dallas. Houston, a four and a half point favorite. The top team in the South region. The over-under JY up by a point this morning to 134 and a half. From your coach's scouting report, what is the key matchup that will side the outcome of this game between Houston and Duke and earn one of these two teams a spot in the Elite Eight? It's going to come down to the guard play. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be I, I don't want to call it a, Three on three matchup, right? It's got to be McCain uh, and obviously uh, Proctor um, and the third guard versus Roach uh, versus Sharp, uh, Cryer, and Shed. That's what it's going to come down to. And if you look at how well Duke has played, and particularly McCain the last game making eight threes, they shoot the ball extremely well. 96th percentile, Ben, from the three point line, 92nd percentile transition, 94th percentile in pick and roll offense. That's pretty good, right? Well, they're only going against 98th percentile defending the spot up, 100th, the best in the country at transition D, and the 99th percentile and pick and roll defense. It's going to be interesting because we saw this before. Mississippi State, uh, I'm sorry, Texas a big win. Then they go ahead, and now it's Wade Taylor in the fourth, and he looked like he was put in jail by the Houston guards. Well, guess what, Duke? This is another level of defense that you've never seen before. The only way I think Duke wins is if they find a way to get the guards in foul trouble, which, Ben, can happen because they have a propensity to foul. Yeah. I think the moment's too big. Give me Houston minus the points. Let's take a look at Gonzaga and Purdue lining up tonight, 739 tip time. This game opened up at the FanDuel Sportsbook, a minus 4.5 point favorite for Purdue. Now sits at 5.5, so that number growing slightly. A total that's 154.5. A couple days to prepare. We love last what we saw to each one of these teams. Gonzaga's been phenomenal here in the tournament. Purdue absolutely outrageous in their last game. Where the good times continue to roll for Purdue in one of those brackets we thought would be the easiest. Gonzaga coming up here. That's going to be no easy road here for Purdue tonight. No, Donnie. Gonzaga's been absolutely fantastic. You could argue besides UConn, they may be the most impressive team so far in the tournament through their first two games. But to me, when you look at this matchup, I'm going to, I'm going to circle. I'm going to go one thing for each team. For Purdue, obviously, it's going to be to get the ball inside the Zach Eady. Two guys, 6'10", one guy, 6'9", on Gonzaga. They don't have the height to be able to deal with Zach. Should be able to try to get the ball inside. On the flip side, if I'm Mark Few, and we've seen teams do this lately, folks, you got to get Edie involved in pick-and-roll action and get him in drop coverage. What does that mean? Kill zone jumpers. Folks, if you don't understand, kill zone jumpers or ball screen jumpers where you get to about the elbow area, 15 feet, knock it down. Looking at Ryan Nembhard. He, 36% of his shots are in the pick and roll. Now, if you look at a team like Purdue, they're in the 49th percentile in defending the pick and roll. Drop coverage on Edie. I look at Nimrod to go over his points. I also think Zach Edie goes absolutely off. I can't bet a side or total mm-hmm. because I think it's going to be that good of a game. I think it come down to Edie scoring, which we'll be able to. Nimrod off the pick and roll, taking advantage of Edie defensively. Those two should have big games tonight. It is going to be very interesting to see how that big man matchup p- plays out between Purdue, Zach Eady, and Graham E.K., of course, for Gonzaga. These two teams did meet up back at the end of November in the Maui Invitational, five-and-a-half-point line in favor of Purdue. They won by 10, total of 153-and-a-half. Tonight's total 154-and-a hook did stay under. The night cap in the Midwest Regional Semifinals is out in Detroit and it's another great one. The 2-3 matchup in the Midwest region. Tennessee on the two line. Creighton the three seed. Two and a half point spread in favor of the Volunteers and over under that currently stands at 144 and a half. How competitive, JY, is this game going to be? Oh, th- th- this is the game of the day. Th- this-, this is like what we talked about last night with, with Illinois, uh, obviously in Iowa State. This, this-, this is the game uh, to me because we have to see defensively, particularly with Tennessee, I think Donnie kind of lined it up. They give up three-point shots. And here's a team that loves to shoot the three. Right at the guard. 
with Alexander, right? So to me, that is where the game is going to be maybe won or lost, is the, will Tennessee adjust and guard the two point line? I think Dalton connects in the after situation, but we did not shoot them all great last game. I think he's going to be fine. I think if you're able to set this a little bit inside, both defensively and offensively, I think the difference in this game is the most important the ability to shoot the ball by Creighton. I do think I had Creighton coming out of this uh, region all the way to play Purdue. I am sticking with him, Creighton, with the win tonight. Swimming into the Sweet 16 and possibly the Elite Eight here, we take a look at NC State and Marquette. Take a look at this line, Coach. Minus 6.5 is a favorite for Marquette and a total of 150.5. NC State blazed that trail through the ACC tournament. Five wins in five days. Are they hot enough to take down Marquette in this matchup tonight, or is it Marquette moving on? I think it's Marquette moving on. I think it's because it'll play a Tyler Kolick. Look at his points, rebounds, and assist prop uh, sitting at about 29 and a half. Uh, I, I do think you'll have a situation where they're going to try and keep feeding Kolick and allow him to kind of come off of that wing ball screen uh, and get to the basket and create for others. But also, uh, Tyler Kolick, very underrated rebounder. So I look at 29 and a half points, rebounds, and assists uh, for someone like Tyler Kolick. Uh, inside, obviously, you have to look at uh, DJ Burns, Big Thickum, Thicky Smalls, whatever you want to call him, uh, his ability to score inside against Igadaro, who is not, I would not call a, 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 a bulky center, right? He's more of a finesse guy. Do they try to go to ball, throw the ball inside? I think Shaka Smart's defense and Tyler Kolick's play is a difference. Tyler Kolick over 29 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. And looking at NC State team total to go under. I think that a team like Marquette will get the game at their pace, rely on that pick and roll, and find a way to get it done. BSS cut off at this point here. Just me, you, JY. You ready to rock and roll here as we take it into the break in just a few moments? Give me an upset tonight. Give me a surprise that you're looking forward to tonight. What's the matchup? Maybe a player prop you say, I got to get on tonight in the Sweet 16. Uh, to, to me, uh, it, it, it's got to be Nembard going over uh, his points. I, I think that you have, to, you have to find the matchup that makes the most logical sense, right? A strong point guard that can come off a ball screen Versus a play a team with drop coverage and a guard in Braden Smith, who I don't think is good enough to stay with them. Hard. I think the point guard play, the guard play of uh, Gonzaga is much underrated, not getting the respect they deserve. Nemar should be the play. I think it goes over. And then if you want to go the other way, McCain is going to be in, you know, hell, torture, whatever you want to call it. McPain, whatever you want to say, and it's going to be problems. I would go his points prop under. There's no way Kevin Sampson allows that kid to go off tonight. Sweet 16 action. You know where you need to be right here on the Sports Grid Network. Coach James Young, Donnie Wrightside, and Kevin Walsh live in studio tonight. We'll be sitting side-by-side side for NC State, Marquette, Gonzaga, and Purdue. And breaking down what you need to know for Duke, Houston, Creighton, and Tennessee. What a wonderful time to be on the grid on this glorious Friday. Save the public coming up next. 